Fillion made a deep dive into the weird shit that Balenciaga has done. Okay, Carl, show us some of that grumpy look. No, no. Yeah, let's go. Come on, Carl. You can do it. Yes, don't you dare talk to me. I'm an Aryan Übermensch, too obsessed with the image of myself to be involved with anyone or anything that doesn't fit my stylized image of the world. Wait. Suddenly I'm dressed in something way less expensive. It's H&M. Everybody come together. You can too be a part of this happy smiling group of mixed skin colors for not that much money. Hashtag friendship, hashtag everyone's equal, hashtag happy life, hashtag stop climate change. Oh no. I am so sorry, darling. I didn't see that it was Balenciaga you're wearing. We are strong and tough and unapproachable. Show me that Balenciaga look. Oh, I'm No, this is not satire, I swear to God. Sorry, I think it's back to H&M again. Yay, we're just kidding. We're so cheap, we're so happy. Yes, everybody come closer together. Balenciaga's back. Ooh, fiercer than ever. We are stone cold. Yes. Oh my God, get away from us. Balenciaga is one of the world's most famous luxury fashion brands. Known for its hefty price tags, cutting edge designs, and disruptive avant-garde approach. The brand dominated celebrity culture, runways, and the future of fashion as a whole, until news flooded the internet of Balenciaga's own publication depicting satanic imagery and alluding to child exploitation in various Sorry design campaigns. Is there a cabal of elites who operate under the caring umbrella to manipulate people into buying the devil's drip? Or is this just a quick story pushed by reactionary news sources, networks, and social media? The As is the case with every single fucking fashion brand or anything that is like even tangentially revolved around the art world, it's a bit, bo it's a bit of both. The answer is somewhere in the middle. Always. There is no good and evil. Except this campaign is so fire. I can't. It's, oh God, I love... I, I, this is the only time I've defended AI art. Okay, I fucking... There is I think only it's... Balenciaga, and those too weak to seek it. To understand fashion, you must familiarize yourself with its three tiers. There is Mass market, where inexpensive materials are compiled to create affordable designs for a broad range of customers. Think Target, Walmart, and even Amazon. Pret a porter, or ready to wear, which is self explanatory. Pre manufactured birthday, clothing that sold finished like a pair of jeans from the mall. And the most infamous and least obtainable, haute couture, or high dressmaking in French, combines the basic ingredients of fashion. Silhouette, proportions, color, texture, layering, among others, to conceive something never before seen and perfectly fitted. Technically speaking, haute couture clothing must adhere to certain guidelines in order for it to qualify for this label. However, the term has been used by elite fashion houses to describe their clothing as a step above competition. Fashion houses such as Dior, Chanel, Givenchy, Saint Laurent, and Balenciaga all have one thing in common. Their clothing is seen as more than just an expensive trend. It's seen as art. Whether you agree with this or not, it doesn't matter. You're not their audience. There's an inherent classism in high fashion because the barrier to entry is absurd. They simply don't charge what it costs to make, they charge what people are willing to pay. Luxury brands often spend more on packaging, rent, marketing, shipping, designing, and research because diminishing returns between quality and price already exist. If done right, every detail from the start of production to the finished piece is accounted for and done with purpose. Some even argue that high fashion is less controversial than fast fashion due to the fact that affordable clothing is oftentimes mass produced, sometimes through cheap or even slave labor, while high fashion is regulated, uses higher quality materials, and is designed by expert craftsmen. Or maybe that's just what they want consumers to believe. A vast majority of the world uses clothing strictly as utility, to cover themselves, to keep warm. Most people don't care about style beyond fitting in or following the status quo. High fashion comes with a privilege and can play on one's need to be part of a group or deviate from it entirely. Then you have companies like Zara, 
the number one enemy of high fashion, who relentlessly steal silhouettes and use <laughs> cheap materials <laughs> to earn insane profits. It should be noted that expensive brands are not above this either. Stealing designs is just a problem True. that will most likely never get so Damn, okay, Fillion, this is like... Like, surprisingly... I mean, it's like, bare, it's only scratching the surface, but also surprisingly knowledgeable. I would not expect this from, like, a YouTuber who is not specifically focused in, like, fashion. Actually very good. Solved. In some way, high fashion will always be different from fast fashion because it invokes some sort of feeling, giving meaning to a consumer. Or at least, that's what they often strive for. Sometimes, the artistry gets lost in translation, and high fashion brands stretch the absurd themes for the sole purpose of being different or original. And if you have to try this hard to be different, are you even any different at all? This mentality ended up leaving Balenciaga, its parent company Kering, as well as anyone else involved in the brand with a ton of questions from the public that they couldn't answer. Their response? Half-baked apologies and a hard reset. Whether the accusations are true or not, there is plenty of information floating around the internet that, once pieced together, provides a sufficient explanation. Balenciaga's origins began with one man, Cristobal Balenciaga as a guere, the king of fashion. At the age of 12, in 1907, Cristobal was an apprentice for a tailor until the foremost noblewoman in his... My sister's boyfriend's pretty high up in a skater fashion brand and they purchased the same hoodies, Louis Vuitton and Gucci, and sell it for 200 instead of 850 minimum law. Yeah, except $200 for a hoodie is also fucking insane. But yes, a lot of these... You need my phone? Um, possibly. town, the Marchioness de Casatores became his client. She saw Cristobal's raw talent and decided to send him to Madrid to be formally trained as a couturier. Cristobal earned rapid success for being one of the few couturiers who could redefine silhouettes and use their own hands to pattern, cut, and sew any design imagined. In 1918, at the age of 23, Cristobal opened his first boutique in San Sebastián, Spain. His brand quickly branched off to Madrid and Barcelona, where Spanish aristocracy began to wear his designs. After the onset of the Spanish Civil War, Cristobal was forced to close down his boutiques and move to Paris. As much as he may have missed his homeland, France provided Cristobal with opportunities in fashion that he could not resist. His genius was truly admired in post-war Europe through silhouettes, high-waisted dresses, and coat cuts until 1968, at the age of 74, when he decided to retire and close his fashion houses. Cristobal Balenciaga would pass away four years later in Xabia, Spain, with a reputation from other designers as, quote, the master of us all, and, quote, the only couturier in the truest sense of the word. Sadly, it appeared as if the Balenciaga name would die alongside its founder. The I mean, that shit's pretty fucking... Look at that, dude. That is like would die along legitimately revolutionary for the time period. I mean, what the fuck? Even high, even high waisted cuts like that. I mean, that that's fire. You can get mad at it. You can say it's stupid. You can say it's dumb. It's understandable. Uh, you are entitled to have your opinion, but it is incredibly ahead of its time. And not only that, not only that, but also fashion in general is in this very unique space where it's supposed to be like artistic interpretation uh, through uh, this different medium that is wearable. So obviously it has different components involved with it, which is why it always receives so much, which is why it always receives so much attention and always gets shit on regularly. And yeah, it is kind of dumb for sure. But, you know, I'm a fan of that dumb shit. So uh, I personally like it. I, I think it's cool. But I am by no ways saying that, uh, you know, you should think it's cool as well. I don't think it's also is a traditionally feminine craft. Uh, yeah. But even if you're going to know uh, and, and say that it's dumb, it's good to know the basics if you want to shit on it more adequately.
founder. The brand was reignited in 1986 when Jacques Conquier of Jacques Bogart bought the Balenciaga company. Under new management, the Balenciaga name actively kept up with the latest fashion trends, with the brand's products and accessories being highly sought after by consumers. In 2001, Balenciaga would be bought again by the Gucci Group under the management of Pinot Priton Redu or PPR for an undisclosed sum. PPR had started as a timber trading company in France, but at some point transitioned to luxury goods by acquiring companies such as Bottega Veneta, Gucci, Alexander McQueen, and Yves Saint Laurent. PPR, a now multinational conglomerate named Kering, saw promise in the Balenciaga name, setting it on a path of success that was only recently stifled. With their creative director being known for his provocative trolling and statements with his clothing, the brand is constantly at the forefront of pop culture. Balenciaga was sure to make new waves in modern fashion. By pushing the boundaries of avant-garde clothing and an understanding of meme culture mixed with performance art, but it was only a matter of time something sinister would wash up. Yes, they're all, yes, they 100% are all still owned by like the same conglomerates. A lot of these fashion houses are owned by like three or four major conglomerates, Louis Vuitton being uh, one of the biggest ones. It's the same as even cars. When you think about like all the way from a, a, a Volkswagen to a uh, Audi to all the way to Lamborghini, they are all under the Volkswagen uh, Auto Group, right? Every single part of, yeah, uh, L LVMH and Caring. All, all matter of, all matter of vehicles. Oh, Porsche as well, obviously. I can't believe I forgot that. All matter of, of things that you consume, all matter of commodities that you purchase are always going to be uh, owned by pretty much the same fucking like three or four companies that dominate every single industry. They are all oligopolies for the most part. Bringing the latest in contemporary fashion with form and technique, this new house of Balenciaga had solidified a name for itself among the elite as Cristobal once did, claiming to deliver, quote, unprecedented interactions with the expanding digital realm, material development. Oh yeah, they did this on Twitch. I remember this was like, wasn't this like a Twitch uh, bounty? Social responsibilities in the- How did they do that so seriously looking like that? Brother, it is not for you. Okay, it's not. It's just like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, what's a good way to, what's a good way to describe it? Like, Well, especially, especially Balenciaga has so much shit too, like awful garbage shit and some great pieces, uh, I, I will admit, but just an absolute nonsensical amount of like shock factor, shock value, supposedly hot couture, uh, uh, clothing that, uh, is readily available for mass consumption, but fashion is not necessary for survival. Yeah, no shit. You're on Twitch. What element of what element of your consumption is necessary for survival? What the fuck do you mean? No one is making this argument. It would sure be really embarrassing if you for the guy who made this argument that you made up in your mind, but you know, that's not the case. You know? Bro is literally on Twitch asking about something being taken seriously. I know, literally. Like, he probably thinks that he needs a $5 subscription because otherwise he's going to die if he sees the ads at the top of the hour. You know what I mean? Because at the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break. Okay? Which is the best uh, way that you can, you know, spend $5, I would say. By subscribing and avoiding the top of the hour ad breaks. Uh, or by getting gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Balenciaga Harry.
hopes of staying at the forefront of modernity. If you have ever increasing original ideas and designs, Dynamic jab, there is bound to be criticism and pushback. Yet a revolutionary or unique product or trend was not Balenciaga's problem. In one of the luxury house's latest campaigns published on November 16th, 2022, titled Balenciaga Gift Shop, children were pictured holding teddy bear handbags wearing supposed BDSM gear. The children can also be seen in questionable poses and amid wine glasses, which social media ran with as child exploitation or endangerment. This collection was captured by famous photographer Gabriel Galamberti, whose most notable collection, Toy Stories, resembled the style used in the Balenciaga campaign. According to media sources, Galamberti was told by Balenciaga representatives to use his Toy Stories approach, but they would provide the punk items. Besides child exploitation, as if that wasn't damning enough, Balenciaga's campaigns were thought to contain satanic imagery. Through evidence such as a child's drawing with what looks like to be the devil, a black hoodie neatly placed resembling cult attire, as well as- No, that's so lame because people said that because they're conspiracy, uh, they're conspiracy LGBTQ haters. No, 100%. But it's still fucking weird. Like- you should not use children for shock value. That's it. That's, that's like, it's so odd. And if you recall at the time, I covered this story as well, parsing through the nonsensical, like, ultra-Christian fundamentalist schizos claiming that, like, uh, you know, all matter of art was actually pedophilic or whatever. But, um, and the children were literally working, uh, the, the children were working, the children yearn for the mines again. <laughs> no, um, the children were uh, the kids of the people that work at Balenciaga, which doesn't matter. Like it does, it's just like weird and gross, and and absolutely should not be uh, anywhere near this kind of uh, project when you are simply trying to come across as edgy and and unique. Do you understand what I mean? Like. That's it. Uh, that's it. The children yearn for the drip. I don't see any pedophilia in it, though. No, but like uh, the the uh, punk BDSM uh, aesthetic, uh, especially as the kids were like holding on to it, were uh, were a strange choice, and they did it deliberately. They did it by design. The reason why they made the kids do this uh, ad campaign was so that it would get this kind of shock value. You know what I mean? the most compelling clue, a roll of yellow Balenciaga tape depicting two A's, which spells Ball. Ball was an ancient word used in the Levant to describe an owner or lord. But in its <laughs> yeah, I don't really care about like the satanic imagery associated with the children. That stuff is just like, yeah, that's nonsensical. I'm sure they put it deliberately, but no, 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 no. Even if they put it fucking deliberately, who gives a shit? Like they're they're just insane. You know what I mean? The people that are like, oh no, they're definitely like, they're definitely satanic. Those people are fucking crazy. Okay. Why don't you care about it? That's not weird to you. Why don't I care about what? Satanic panic? Did you actually seriously come in here and say, why don't you care about the satanic? Because... What? Uh, do you want me to take like, like weird fairy tales seriously? Like, I don't understand. No, they're putting, at what point do you let go of the cynicism? Let go of the cynicism and believe what exactly? That these guys are, that these guys are like legitimately working at the behest of Satan? Chatter. You need to be deplatformed, not Kai. <laughs> True. Uh, for for not taking the for not taking the issue of Satan seriously. <laughs> Chatter was like, bro, what do you mean? What's going on? These guys clearly work for Satan. Hello? Why is my favorite streamer not taking this seriously? This is really fucked up, man. <laughs> no, they're going for shock value. 
And if it wasn't kids, and if they did this and way more unhinged shit with adults, then I wouldn't give a fuck at all. I would make fun of it more modern iteration, it has become the name of a pagan god, synonymous with child sacrifice. Some people even go as far as to say Google Translate reinforces the satanic controversy. Using Latin to English, typing ball nc aga into the search bar gives you ball is king. But <laughs> this is where the conspiracy theory starts to run into some problems. The yes! actual word for king in Latin is rex, and you can experiment with Latin to English and come up with similar odd results. There is also ba len si aga. Wait, he doesn't believe any of this, right? Like, please, Philly, and don't, don't tell me you think this is all like, this all means something, right? Like, so what, what's the, like, this would be what? That, like, Google is working side by side at the behest of Satan along with uh, Balenciaga to do what exactly? No, he's explaining Which it. Which translates to do what you want. But does anyone believe Google Translate even remotely works, let alone for Latin? Try using Google Translate to have a conversation with someone who speaks a different language, and you will find out soon enough it falls apart. For example, if you type in stop hair loss, you get today's video is sponsored by Keeps. Oh, Keeps is a fucking jabated, dude. E -E -P -S That's a good ass jabate. That's crazy. Dot com slash Philion. That's a 10 the link down below. And thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Fucking Why would Satanists shit. intercept Google Translate's code to make this message? Did Lucifer tell them to? And isn't Balenciaga the founder's middle name? A family name passed down for generations? Wait, was Cristobal's family Satanists? This would have to be the single greatest Satanic PSYOP starting in eight- I think the funniest part about this is that like- they're so very clearly and desperately trying to people who type stuff in the Google Translate for this are doing it while their kid is under the sink drinking chemicals. <laughs> ah! Dude, dude, it, it, they're so very desperately trying to appear edgy and different. Uh it's no different than like uh what was the pants that they just fucking sold? recently that i saw that were like they look like it went through a shredder where the entire ass of the fucking pants was just like wide open you guys have probably seen it It was like deconstructive denim or whatever they were calling it like it is in the same vein as like trying so extra hard to be extra and in many respects falling uh short because it's like just for a uh, like a brief moment of, of attention. It's like a kid yelling in the fucking corner when he's put in timeout. 1895 and finally coming to fruition in 2023 with the fall of Google Translate. The sad reality is you don't need a child murdering God if it's already confirmed that we live in a hellish society by the fact that Balenciaga's sincere apology was posted as an Instagram story. And at this point, the ultimate power move would have been to never apologize. But this is what they had to say. We sincerely apologize for any offense our holiday campaign may have caused. Our plush bear bags should not have been featured with children in this campaign. We have immediately removed the campaign from all platforms. It should be noted that Balenciaga is apologizing for depicting the bags with children, not the bags themselves. Oftentimes on social media, silence is immediately equated to guilt, and by the time they responded, the damage was already done. Balenciaga headquarters was in full crisis management mode, until another disaster struck. A campaign focused on an office theme, highlighting Balenciaga's guard robe line and a new era for the brand, was projected to launch in spring of 2023, which was in collaboration with Adidas. At first glance, nothing seemed out of the ordinary with this campaign, but the internet was hesitant to trust the multi-billion dollar company after their previous oversight. It should be noted that photography sets are controlled environments where everything on the scene is purposeful especially at this caliber. In what resembles a deliberate act by the studio and crews involved, Balenciaga's guard robe campaign included a photo with a page from a Supreme Court ruling 
of United States v. Williams. Adidas equals all day I dream about Satan. <laughs> United States v. Williams was a ruling to prohibit the promotion or pandering of child pornography and that it was not in violation of the First Amendment. Essentially, Michael Williams was Chris Hansen in a chat room by Secret Service agent Timothy Devine, who posed as Lisa and Miami. After receiving images of minors engaging in sexually explicit conduct, the Secret Service executed a search warrant of Williams' home, seizing more images of underage children. Why would Balenciaga purposely place this in one of their campaigns? What were they trying to insinuate? In the background of an image from the same campaign, observant viewers found more features. A pair of strange art books, Matthew Barney's The Cremaster Cycle, and Michael Borman's As Sweet As It Gets. The first book describes visuals from Barney's five-part film series of the same name. The films were created purposefully out of order because Matt Barney, quite frankly, doesn't give a shit. The man makes <laughs> five experimental movies with little to no dialogue, ends up being hailed the most important American artist of his generation by the New York Times, and refuses to elaborate. However, there are two sides of the aisle. One side believes the films are bizarre, filled with nightmarish creatures and obscure sexual references, while others believe it to be an utter masterpiece. Why don't you decide? Is there TOS in this? There's certainly overlap between Balenciaga and the Cremaster Cycle. Both play with avant-garde fashion, as well as strange environments, to convey a sense of outlandish futurism, not too far off from one of their runways. The second book, published in 2014, combines more than 100 pieces. Yeah, the only fucking two weird things uh, in two separate campaigns Using kids with the with the punk but punk slash BDSM aesthetic is weird, odd. They shouldn't have done that. And then the second one was the fucking uh, very clearly placed Supreme Court decision. Um, other than that, the rest of it is just art shit. In my opinion, as I gave you my assessment last time this happened, or last time this was like popping off, it's like 75 to 80% like freaks that are uh, losing their minds. Um and 25% and them being fucking gross weirdos because they think it's cutting edge and edgy. Okay? Ball is art, Hassan 2023? No. But all art is, like, most art is about cut being cutting edge and being considered degenerate and perverse. Uh, it's just reflected on our contemporary values and, and I guess, breaking through our current and contemporary understanding. Will there be missteps in that situation? Absolutely. Okay, but that's how it works. Motherfuckers are acting like you're you're a 17th century peasant being like, uh, <laughs> me lord, I saw in the courthouse. <laughs> They're drawing things that are not simple tapestries. <laughs> It's the work of the devil. Have he does, my lord. Produced by Michael Bormans over a total of 14 years, including maybe his most infamous work, Fire from the Sun, which depicts unsettling images of maimed children covered in blood, with ominous implications of violence and other disturbing imagery. To some, it's reminiscent of Lord of the Flies and the Loss of Innocence. To others, it's the most disgusting excuse <laughs> for art they've ever seen. But art is subjective, and there are probably dozens of people ready to line up and gaze upon Borman's mutilated toddlers. Regardless if you like Borman's art, 
He's an established European artist who illustrates whatever he wants, and his artwork is displayed in museums across the globe. One thing is for- This is gross. One star on Amazon review. <laughs> Is fucked up <laughs> and gross. No, my favorite was um was what was it was it um my favorite out of the out of all of the shit that we saw, uh the one that basically devolved into uh the very famous Goya painting of Saturn devouring his son. When I reached the point of uh of of Twitter schizo threads. When we reached the point of Twitter schizo threads where we finally arrived at Goya and, and uh, you know, uh, Saturn devouring his son being mentioned as pedophilic and satanic, I was like, oh, that, okay, like, we're good. We, I, I reached my limit of, like, I can't even look at this any longer. This is fucking ridiculous. Um, if, if only my mother was here watching me fucking uh, parse through all of this shit. Uh, she would probably have a good laugh, okay? Like, devouring his son? So basically, he's eating a mind... Stop, please. Please. <laughs> Don't even make this as a joke, please, because people do actually fucking take it super seriously. <laughs> there are people who are legitimately like... Don't tell Joe Rogan about this painting. Yeah. Oh, my God. Imagine your conspiracy nut grandma reviewing a fine art book on Amazon. Exactly. Okay. Stop. I know we all like LARPing as weird schizo posting right wing freaks. Please stop posting like that in the chat right now. I can't tell if you're being serious or not. For sure. Not everyone wants to be associated with him. Gabrielle Gallimberti even had to clarify that the campaign featuring the Supreme Court document and Borman's alarming literature was not photographed by him, stating, Following the hundreds of hate mails and messages I received as a result of the photos I took for the Balenciaga campaign, I feel compelled to make this statement. I am not in a position to comment on Balenciaga's choices, but I must stress that I was not entitled in whatsoever manner to neither choose the products nor the models nor the combination of the same. As a photographer, I was only and solely requested to light the given scene and take shots according to my signature style. As usual for a commercial shooting, the direction of the campaign and the choice of the objects displayed are not in the hands of the photographer. I suspect that any person prone to pedophilia searches on the web and has unfortunately a too easy access to images completely different than mine, absolutely explicit in their awful content. Lynchings like these are addressed against wrong targets and to distract from the real problem and criminals. Also, I have no connection with the photo where a Supreme Court document appears. That one was taken in another set by other people and was falsely associated yeah, with my photos. Yeah, it was two photos. separate. Gabrielle. It was two separate, completely unrelated ad campaigns that... Um, was being unfairly lumped into the second campaign while social media, Twitter mainly, Sorry. was trigger happy with their allegations. He had faced enough criticism. Balenciaga's apology for the guard rope line was pretty much identical to their first apology, except they did partner with the National Children's Alliance in hopes of restoring some decency. We apologize for displaying unsettling documents in our campaign. Balenciaga added, we take this matter very seriously and are taking legal action against the- <coughs> Like, if they hadn't put the fucking Supreme Court document, <coughs> or if they used the kids in the other campaign, if they hadn't done either of those things, <coughs> everyone would be- Like, most people, the, the, the liberals uh, in elite society, would be laughing at the schizo posting. But because they did both of those things, 
and they neatly packaged it, it was over. <coughs> parties responsible for creating like this. they would they would literally say this anyway they say this about everything set and including unapproved items for our spring 23 campaign photo shoot we strongly condemn abuse of children in any form we stand for children's safety and well-being but a simple apology would not suffice everyone was out for blood Balenciaga officials announced the beginning of a $25 million lawsuit against North Six, the production company that built the Guard Rope campaign, and Nicolas Desjarda, the set designer. What people may not know is that Balenciaga promptly dropped this lawsuit and has decided not to pursue any legal discourse. There are three potential reasons as to why they would do why would they, what would they, that would be a ridiculous lawsuit. This, it was a complete accident and the documents were rented from props used in movies and television. Balenciaga knew about the documents, went through with the campaign, and weren't obliged to say anything until heavily criticized. Or, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Something tells me that associating in the same stratosphere as CP would have to be the dumbest marketing move ever. It's simply inconceivable, but you can draw your own conclusions. Kim Kardashian, Balenciaga's biggest collaborator and celebrity endorsement, spoke out about the controversy, stating that she would be reevaluating her relationship with the brand. Naturally, Balenciaga got seriously worried, so they decided to apologize again. In a now-deleted Instagram post, Balenciaga addressed the issues raised by its advertising campaigns. The company repeated that it deplores child abuse and that it was, quote, never our intent to include it in our narrative. Cristobal may have never been around for the public to cast blame. Nonetheless, the online mob did decide to berate a single man. On schizos are running the world now, dude. It's done. Anyone that they turn... Anyone that they turn their crosshairs onto, especially in this day and age, they can literally whip up so much support on Twitter. It's like, it, it, it's, it's straight up. I mean, half of those motherfuckers are also literally doing this with any mention of like trans folk. Okay. That's like literally is any mention of queer folk, trans folk immediately. They're like. All right, that's it. There's pedophilia happening. And 90% of the time is a projection, as you know already. September 13th, 2021. In typical Kardashian fashion, all of the attention at the Met Gala was on Kim. The dress code theme was American independence, yet she was completely covered and murdered out next to another shadowy figure, Demna Vasalia. Demna is Balenciaga's creative director and co-founder of Vetement, who was blamed for allowing these campaign mistakes to slip through. He only apologized to the public once the business of fashion, a lead authority in the industry, revoked him as recipient of their Global Voices Award for 2022. To this day, Demna is attacked on social media for his involvement with Balenciaga's controversy. In an interview with Vogue, Demna tried to clarify that the teddy bear bags were in reference to punk and DIY culture. Absolutely not BDSM. Quote, I didn't realize how inappropriate it would be to put these objects in the image and still have the kid in the middle. It unfortunately was the wrong idea and a bad decision from me. One theory that is not out of the question is that Demna knew associating children, which are conventionally portrayed with innocence, next to the dark aesthetics of evil, would be sure to cause commotion. Yeah, 100%. No, that's it. That, that that's your answer absolutely 1000 percent yeah and it, and he didn't realize how far he was taking it which he was and that kind of shit would 100 percent law fucking bullshit it wasn't being used yeah it was it was it was it's it's literally it's literally deliberately done that's what i was trying to say like no real evil person okay is directly tailoring their content to look evil. That's why it's so fucking stupid. Like, what do you think? Like, if there's actually a satanic conspiracy and the Illuminati are running rampant in society, 
You think they're trying to fucking be like, look at us. We're the Illuminati. Hey, you know what I mean? Check, check us out. Look at us. Oh, oh, like one of those. You know what I mean? It's so, it's so fucking dumb. Nah, they slip up all the time. Yeah. I hate when I slip up and put, uh, put yellow tape that says ball in front of a kid. No, it's just, it's incredibly fucking stupid. However, this slippery slope of association led people to connect everything in proximity to it whether it made sense or not. Either way, Demna apologized. So it's only right that internet detectives would move on to more individuals to barrage, whether they were guilty or not. Online theories surrounding Balenciaga spawned from Reddit, Twitter, and 4chan, gained a ton of attention, but mistakenly provided incorrect oh, information. Oh yes, yes, this was the thread. I think I'm pretty sure this was the thread that ended with fucking Goya being a pedophilic. God, God, I fucking love this shit so much. Regarding a renowned model and stylist, Lada Valkova. Lada was a former stylist for Balenciaga and co-founder of the famous 2014 streetwear collective Vetma. Beside Which, by the way, like grossly... Uh, misunderstanding the power dynamic in a situation like this, where like this stylist is actually the one who is legitimately uh, impactful in, in uh, the artistic decisions that are taking place in Balenciaga fucking like seven, eight years later. Demna Vasalia and in a photo shoot. She was heavily criticized for the BDSM themed teddy bears and Supreme Court ruling prop to the point she had to condemn the abuse of children in any form. Lada was also thought to be the model pictured here, carrying two blood-soaked dolls during a runway shoot. This photo in particular circulated online, riling up more people, but was later disproved. The real model is unnamed, and the photo itself was verified to be from 2016 China Fashion Week. To further prove her innocence, Lada has claimed to not have worked with Balenciaga or its Wait team a minute. since 2000. China? Hold up. They're the devil, brother. They're doing devil work. 2017. This did not stop Jake Shields, a former UFC fighter, from posting her occult-themed artwork on Twitter. Since Shields had the wrong identity of Lada to begin with, it's possible the photos he obtained from her Instagram are fake. But it's also conceivable that she's deleted any possible- Also, no. No, man. Jake Shields is like an insane person. Jake Shields is the- Pro possibly the best human uh, embodiment of CTE. He is literally just walking, talking CTE. Not very, not ra rarely ever talking, okay? This man is just brain damage. An absolute psychopath. Come on now. Images that could incriminate her. Though edgy artists exist and the internet seems to forget that. Lada's dark shit posting. Remember when, uh, remember when fucking, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Jake Shields was like, remember when Jake Shields was fantasizing about literally, it's like hard for me to even say this out loud, but when he was fantasizing about doing stuff to Greta Thunberg. Is just her aesthetic. However, the biggest worry for her detractors were the photos including children, social media posts yeah, with blood, as well as her relationship with the third and final co-founder of Vetma, Gosha Rubchinsky. In 2018, Gosha was Gosha accused of pressuring actual a 16 model into uh, sending freak. him explicit pictures. He you know, like, <laughs> Gosha Rubchinsky is the, is the Ali Alexander of the fashion world in a field where there are many Ali Alexanders, by the way. Denied the claims and said that the messages were manipulated in order to make him malicious and that he was just asking for pictures for a particular runway shoot. Nothing has come of these allegations since. It may be true that Lada and or Gosha influenced Balenciaga's decisions when they work there, but shouldn't be to blame for incidents that happened years later. Artists like Lada 
love shock value whether they know it or not, oftentimes forming a niche audience that appreciates their work. Additionally, fringe artists revel in the idea of people being mad at them for something as surface level as provocative social media posts. What may be satanic and horrifying to some, just goes hard for others. When this artistry or provocation bleeds into traditional, naive channels of information, they're met with torches and pitchforks. <laughs> but this is not the first time a worldwide fashion brand has been accused of child exploitation. If you grew up during the 80s and 90s, the allegations surrounding Calvin Klein can be seen as eerily familiar. In 1980, Calvin Klein decided he needed a new model with a modern spirit to be the face of his upcoming Calvin Klein jean campaign. Calvin's interests led him to choose 15-year-old Brooke Shields. The secret of life lies hidden in the genetic code. Genes are fundamental in determining the characteristics of an individual and passing on these characteristics to succeeding generations. Okay. It's very weird that like nowadays people literally hearken like Nazi accounts will harken back to like Brooke Shields when she was fucking 15 years old and was like hyper exploited uh, by not only the fashion industry but just like Hollywood in general. Occasionally certain conditions produce a structural change in the gene which will bring about the process of evolution. This may occur in one or more of the following ways. Firstly, by selective mating, in which a single gene type proves superior in transmitting its genes to future generations. Secondly, by gene drift, in which certain genes may fade away while other genes persist. And finally, by natural selection, which filters out those genes better equipped than others to endure in the environment. This may result in the origin of an entirely new species, which brings us to Calvin's and the survival of the fittest. Calvin Klein genes. Predictably, a lot of people Thank took you, issue with the Thank sexualization the of a 15-year-old, but Brooke claims that there were no problems and that Calvin treated her well on set. Nowadays, looking back on the subs. situation, Brooke covers the controversy stating, quote, I can understand it now where it's coming from. But for some reason, and maybe it's just protection, I'm not mad at it. It afforded me a lot. After all, she says, quote, sex sells. Sex has been selling since the dawn of time, and it still does. This statement highlights that she's aware that she's been sexualized underage because she was compensated and her career took off. I guess, depending on how much money you're paid, you can be groomed into believing it was par for the course. Brooke Shields wasn't the only con controversial choice made by Calvin Klein back in the day. Bro, people get so confused when they see like content from the 80s. You just saw that piece of uh, footage, right? And you're like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Literally every single fucking rock and roll celebrity, every single artist from that time frame and even earlier on has made songs about having sex with like 14 year old girls. Okay. Like literally it's just, it is so insane to even think about now, but like they very openly talked about it. Kid Rock, as we talked about, okay? Kid Rock literally has a song called Jailbait that was in the soundtrack of the movie Osmosis Jones, man. Like, in a fucking kid's movie. Yeah, Kid Rock, the one who's like, yeah, they, I can't believe Bud Light's doing queer culture. <laughs> 12 years after her campaign with Calvin Klein, Kate Moss and Mark Wahlberg were pictured in an infamous advertisement. The controversy began due to the fact Kate was 17 at the time, posing topless on top of the 21-year-old Wahlberg. Now that could definitely come between me and my Calvins. Do you have Calvin Klein underwear on? Identifying her actual age on the internet. Mark Wahlberg was how many years removed from a hate crime at that point, by the way? I think, what, four? For the record. Like, no, yeah, Mark Wahlberg at that point was like five years removed from uh, uh, 
going to jail for a hate crime against a Vietnamese man, a bunch of uh, uh, black people as well, but the most, the, the worst offense being a Vietnamese man that uh, he beat up so badly that uh, he blinded him. I think he did that in the same duration, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure, pretty sure he did that in the same 24-hour time frame. All this designer got me drip drip. Okay, stop. I mean, Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg now is a very different person than who he was back then. He's, I mean, he's corny. It's funny to make fun of him. Um, I'm just saying that like at the time though, he was 21, not that far removed from not that far removed from the actions that we're talking about. But hey, Catholicism saved him and the Catholic app. The Catholicism app <laughs> saved his life. <laughs> and all the designer that he's got. I love other people. I love that you guys also are familiar with Mark Wahlberg memes and, and are, are dropping it in the chat. For those of you... For those of you who are unfamiliar, does anyone have the link uh, of, the, of the Instagram video? Mark Wahlberg is one of my favorite funny follows. Oh, here, this is it. All this design that got me drip drip. All this got me drip drip. Okay, they made this edit cooler, okay? He's like 60 years old, man. That's crazy. Wild. Wild state of affairs. Is a bit murky, as some sources say 17, others say 18. However, Kate Moss herself said she experienced a nervous break at 17 or 18 when she had to participate in these shoots. And this predatory environment was not new to her, as she had been asked to remove her bra at the <laughs> age of 15 during a separate photo shoot. By far the most chilling campaign made by Calvin Klein was in 1995. You look like a movie star. Yes. I am. You are? Yes. Where are you from? I'm from Italy. I'm from Roma. Uh-huh. So you've made films already? Sorry? Have you made films already? Yes. Uh-huh. Have you made love in film? Uh, what? Have you ever made love in a film? Yes. You have? I'm an actress. Oh, yeah. Smile? <laughs> I smile with my eyes. I prefer. Now turn around and walk towards the wall again. And now, when you get to the wall, just, there you go. And give me a smile. Good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm shy. <laughs> I prefer to die this moment. <laughs> you got a real nice look. How old are you? 21. What's your name? August. Why don't you stand up? Are you strong? I'd like to think so. You think you could rip that shirt off of you? It's a nice body. Do you work out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can tell. This campaign shot by Stephen. Dude, what the fuck? They were like, bro, let's do a campaign where we're doing, you know, uh, snuff footage. That's wild. Yeah, I, I mean, look, as long as those guys are adults, though, it's nowhere near as bad as any of the other uh, shit that we saw. I mean, it's, it's like weird. It's gross. But again... And Meisel became one of the most controversial. In it's the like brands. one of those situations where it's like creepy but legal. You know what I mean? <laughs> History. The ads featured some underage models. Okay, well then, yeah, that's an entirely different. Up, oh, never mind. 
Like I said, as long as they're as long as they're of age. Like a wood paneled basement. And there are still relics from these commercials online today. Can you unbutton the top button of those jeans? No. Why don't you and, push them down a little bit? And I don't think so. Are you and, nervous? Yeah. <laughs> and there we are. Why? Because I'm on the spot. <laughs> been on the spot before not like this <laughs> this torture <laughs> for the most part you just get the feeling that you're watching Patrick Bateman's videotapes. Thousands of people, including parent groups, child welfare authorities, and the American Family Association, agreed that these ads were exploitative in nature and borderline CP. The president at the time, Bill Clinton, as well as his wife Hillary, were at a re-election dinner when Bill decided to talk about, quote, the explosion of crime among juveniles. He added, quote, I may be stepping on somebody's toes tonight. I don't have have any comment on whether those Calvin Klein ads were legal or illegal, but those children were my daughter's age. Man, I'm so glad that Bill, Jeffrey Epstein's best friend, been on the Lolita Express multiple times, Clinton, had some things to say about the exploitation of juveniles. He was like, hey, real bad that I wasn't the one doing it. <laughs> yeah, damn, Bill. You, you speak on it, man. He's like, he knows CP. He's a he's a bit of a sommelier, if if you will, of <laughs> CP. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, when he said he's stepping on toes, he meant like friendly toes. Okay. in those ads and they were outrageous it was wrong it was wrong to manipulate those children and use them for commercial benefit it's hard enough to grow up as it is without confusing people further settle down bill i got this one dinner had launched an entire investigation into Calvin Klein by the Justice Department to find if any advertisements broke pornography laws. Their summary concluded Calvin Klein had used several minors in the ad campaign, but photographs or videos of them did not display the, quote, genital and pubic areas, as federal law requires in order to prove the sexual exploitation of children. Eventually, the investigation was dropped altogether, as Calvin Klein was able to prove the models pictured in risk photos were of age, while underage models were not depicted sexually. They still pulled every ad in the hopes of regaining some of their popularity, which saved them. This controversy blew over and didn't really matter in the long run. Calvin Klein is now worth around $800 million. So if anything, consumers just heard the name more and bought the jeans. Perhaps Balenciaga wanted to further experiment with shock value and knew that it would be successful in attracting more consumers over an extended period of time. It may have backfired initially, but they'll come back. They weren't the first fashion company to come under fire, and they won't be the last. Balenciaga will continue pushing boundaries of fashion to satisfy an artistic need, almost as if to usher in a new age of performance art. Contemporary fashion houses, including Balenciaga, have moved to incorporate crazy- I think it's like pretty simple, just don't include children. Like, am I crazy? Like, there are certain boundaries you're not supposed to cross, even in the- in, in the- field of art and it's like it's the most obvious one you know what i mean like it's the it's the it's the simplest one that's it because like i said balenciaga would still be weird you know what i mean they would it's not like you know they're not gonna it's not like they're gonna be perceived by the mass consumer audience as like a normal brand um if they had not had the children or the, even if they had not visibly centered children for that juxtaposition that got them quote unquote canceled, nobody, <coughs> nobody would have even <coughs> fished through the other stuff to find the, the Supreme court brief. You know what I mean?
empty settings into their design philosophy. If the clothes or set doesn't speak to you, if they don't have a hidden theme, then they're doing something wrong. Whether it's the back rooms, a rented out parking garage, a mountain of graffiti, an epileptic's worst nightmare, a strobe light rave, or an actual parking garage, and lastly, <laughs> for spring and summer in 2023, Balenciaga paid a Spanish artist to design a mud runway for their show. Demna explained in a- Loki, that was pretty fire, the mud runway. I mean, statement before the event that, quote, the set of this show is a metaphor for digging for truth and being down to earth. Apart I thought it was really futuristic. I thought it was kind of cool. Performance art, especially because like it's super memeable to settings and canceled celebrities. Amid all of this, Balenciaga's controversy drew the Internet's attention to two indiscriminate artists. Jake and Dinos Chapman. Jake and Dinos are British visual artists. They make new Worker Miller boots, right? No, that's Prada. But those boots are fire. Uh, Will has them too. Those boots are actually the one that, um, what's his face has? The, the Chechen uh, dude has. Artists who deliberately create shocking imagery yeah, that tend dogs. to land them in trouble from time to time. The Chapmans were linked to Balenciaga through a corporate family tree. It begins with Francois Henry Penault, the CEO of Kering. Besides Balenciaga, Kering also owns a company called Group Artemis, which is the parent company of Christie's. Christie's is an art auction house where you can browse the world's finest art. And if you browse long enough, you may stumble upon Jake and Dino's disturbing art. There's Fuckface, the Zygotic, the Four-Headed Cockroach Kid, Forehead, Platinum Joey, Two-Faced Cunt, or maybe you wanted Fuckface in bronze, Doggy, there's no hearing anyone out. This should be illegal. There's plenty more unsettling art made by Jake and Dino's, but I wouldn't waste your time. Yo! Yo! Okay, that's criminal. That's gotta be criminal. If that's not a crime, it should be a crime, right? Okay, well, remember when I said artistic interpretation, you know, people are trying to push boundaries? No! Jail! Dude, British people are wild for this one, okay? I can't believe I'm saying this. That's new crime unlocked. Should be a crime if it's not right now. It should be a crime in the future, I think. I'm looking at it. You'll probably end up on an FBI watch list if you aren't already. It Bro, who buys that? Who are they making this for? Like, Jeffrey Epstein? They have one client, it is Jeffrey Epstein. No, seriously. Who the fuck would buy that, dude? That is so psychotic. <laughs> what beans on toast for breakfast does to a motherfucker. <laughs> no, literally. Like, I guess I guess in a way it's it's like clever, you know what I mean? Cuz all these fucking like billionaire pedophiles are they're the only ones who could buy that shit anyway. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, Prince Andrews and Jeffrey Epstein and, and everyone that's like traveled on the Lydia to Express more than 10 times has purchased one of our uh, exclusive pieces. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> Harlan Crow has a room full of them to remind him it's wrong. <laughs> Harlan Crow built a room he calls pedophile room. And he goes in there and does this. He just goes into the room. It's full of CP and shit like this. And he goes, so bad. Every time. Every time he walks into the room, he's just, even if he's alone, he's like, mmm, mmm. <laughs> it's right next to the Hitler room. <laughs> Yeah, to remind myself how much I dislike it. <laughs> it's clear the brothers don't care about criticism. In fact, it's probably central to their art anyway. 
They do what they love, and that includes sexualizing children and creating miniature models of CP. If Jeffrey Epstein needed a paperweight for his desk, this is probably where he would <laughs> shop. <laughs> yeah. After all, it's not like billionaire Henry Penault is personally involved with each item and artist among his affiliate marketplaces and businesses. He doesn't have time to do this because he's too busy sacrificing a child to ball. If we're to be realists about <laughs> this, the subjective nature of art will never change. What's shocking sells, and often time for these pretentious artists, they feed off pissing you off. The Is that a swastika with like, am I crazy? Art will am never change. Am I turning change. into one of those What's like shizo guys? Sells, and often time Is that actually a rainbow color swastika or no? Maybe I'm being like uh back there. Nah, they made art with Hitler's watercolors. Hitler gets Chapman treatment as hell rises from the ashes. Smiley faces for Fuhrer's watercolor. Successor to Lost in Fire goes on show. They were labeled as vandals for defacing a set of Goya prints. There may have been less fuss over their new target. 13 watercolors of dubious quality by a man who never made his art school despite his best endeavors. Adolf Hitler. The work is entitled, If Hitler Had Been a Hippie, How Happy Would We Be? Oh, this is so... It's so basic. I mean, I don't fucking know. It just feels... It's so basic. Che Young would wear the fuck out of that? Okay, chill. <laughs> I mean, defacing Goya is cringe, but I guess defacing... Uh, Adolf Hitler is like not as cringe, but also like it, it, it's, it's just like, I don't know. Too much time could be spent looking at the art to try to read the mind of the man Hitler became all say they all indicate is that this person is not very good at art. They don't indicate this person will become a terrible tyrant. Fucking hell. Also on show at the White Cube Gallery in central London is nine glass cabinets arranged in a swastika formation with tens of thousands of miniature figures enduring awfulness on a grand scale. The original installation was lost in the East London fire, which destroyed much of Charles Saatchi's stored art collection four years ago. You couldn't fail to see something funny about hell being on fire, said Jake. Their first thought was, let's do it again. We wanted to rescue the work from the sentimentality that soon closed the work after it burned, an affection for the work that wasn't there when it actually existed as an object. So the idea of a world without hell was unacceptable to us. It's so cringe. Like it, it's, it's like shock. There's a lot of stuff like this in the art world where it's just like simple shock uh, value. Um, I would go so far as to say that it's just like not a lot of thought placed into it. Uh, and, and it's exclusively to, to come across as like edgy and attention seeking. Time for these pretentious artists, they feed off pissing you off. The issue, or inherent beauty of art, is that there is no distinct line in the sand of what is too far, and you'll have artists die to protect it. Balenciaga's cancellation was the product of edgy art gone too far, corporate oversight, and a social media witch hunt. When the flow of information is dictated by the 24-hour news cycle, you'll have outlets pump out reactionary Great video by garbage in order to run with the story, because they have to. Social media impressions are then farmed by attention-hungry users that want the world to be more evil than it actually is. It's all too normal and convenient to take a story Filion is like the exact opposite of like the the centrist commentator where at the end of like every centrist commentator's YouTube essay, you end up arriving at a very right-wing conclusion where they like slowly bake that in. Filion does the same thing, but then at the end, he actually tells you a uh, truthful opinion that is closer to reality and will uh, end up telling you something that is uh, ostensibly sometimes leftist as well. 
story and spin it so that it fits an agenda, only to push a narrative of predictable tropes. In a digital era where information is monetizable, it shouldn't be surprising when emotionally charged stories are milked for everything that they are. The answers are always more complex. I simply can't stand it. And if you want to support the antithesis of this, consider signing up to the Third Eye Global Patreon. You'll get exclusive access to our Discord and member-only content. The link is down below. Balenciaga's statements toward their controversial campaigns were met with deaf ears, as most of social media still criticizes them for what they did. But as we saw with Calvin Klein, it takes more than just some strangely artistic campaigns to take down a multi-billion dollar company. Balenciaga will always be Kering's prodigal son, profiting from collaborations with the biggest of celebrities and models. With leadership under Demna, who has been quoted in a recent interview as not being worried about the controversy, only the heads of Balenciaga, such as Demna, know if all of it was a deliberate ploy or a genuine error in judgment. But despite the ethics and morals behind it all... No, I think it was a deliberate ploy that also uh, was went too far, so it did become a, a error in judgment. Yeah, I think it was supposed. It was trying to be, it was trying to be edgy by uh, adding children into like a juxtaposition that children should not be added into at a time when like that kind of content will be absolutely received by the most psychotic people as like, oh my god, they're deliberately giving us a message that they want to like do bad things to children, um, and that rage bait will sometimes bite you in the fucking ass. Yeah, they wanted to be edgy and got themselves cut. Exactly. That's what I think. The uproar that shock value provides will never cease to be fashionable. Demna, who has a genius level understanding of mimetic culture, is responsible for propelling Balenciaga into the stratosphere. And something tells me he's not quite done with the brand yet. Balenciaga! Yeah, meanwhile, the fucking Harry Potter Balenciaga, the Harry Potter Balenciaga uh, videos, if they are an ad campaign, they're fucking brilliant because holy Blinded. shit. Holy fucking shit, dude. Uh, that That is like revitalize the bland, uh, brand on TikTok dramatically, in my opinion. There is no good and evil, only Balenciaga Potter. 